So hey YouTube, how y'all doing? If you're wondering why I'm sitting on the floor, it's because today I'm gonna be cleaning out the bottom of my sink. Hopefully you guys can see that and see me. Let me scoot this back. Um, so the purpose of this is for me, um, I find it very therapeutic watching people declutter and rearrange their, their items in their home, their closets or their cabinets or pantries. Um, it just relaxes me during this time or whatever. And I noticed too, when my space is clear, my mind is clear. But I also wanted to take this time to not only declutter with you guys, but talk to you guys about church hurt. Um, I'm starting to see a trend as far as um, people falling away from the faith and not because of them studying or, you know, trying to really dig into the life of Jesus Christ and the evidence that supports um, him, but the fact that somebody in the church, when well, we have to remember that as the body, as the people, we are the church, we are the temple, but they go to the church house structure and the people within the church are hurting them and it's causing them to leave the faith. And I think that's a very, very dangerous thing because um, you're letting people you're letting people instead of your love for Christ or your relationship with the Most High um, determine your faith. And you're letting people um, influence how you view the faith. And we have to remember that just because people go to church, that doesn't make them a Christian. Um, we also have to remember that uh, Christianity has kind of been the main religion of America. So everybody kind of used to just say they were Christian, even though they really weren't following the laws or the statutes or uh, seeking a relationship with God for themselves, but just attending church just to be going or just because their parents were making them go. So um, that's a very, very dangerous thing. And, you know, I've been hurt when it comes to church people, but I also have to remind myself again that everybody that goes to church is not a Christian. Uh, you guys are seeing a lot of pastors and prophets being exposed and these are the leaders of the church and they're not truly Christians either. So just because you see somebody standing in a pulpit that claims to be a Christian, that doesn't mean that it's true. So don't let people deter you from a faith. Um, and, and that's something that I have to remind myself as people are continuously being exposed, especially in 2020, um, we are not to look to man, we're to look to the most high and you be the light in the church. You know, a lot of times we'll say, um, well, why doesn't the church do this? And why doesn't the church do that? And the pastors is taking all the money and there's people hungry in the streets. Well, if we, the people are the church and we, the people are the body of Christ, why don't you be that light that you, that you want to see in other people because we could sit back and complain but if we're not moving and we're not showing acts of kindness and we're not helping the poor and the needy and those suffering around us then you're part of the problem too if you claim you know that you are a believer so pointing the finger and blaming other people for why we for why we don't believe is not a legit excuse because if you're a true believer then you will embody um the things that you feel that the church is lacking then you will be a light and you will be um you will bring glory to jesus christ so um you know the scripture the scripture talks about that as well you know about there being false teachers and false prophets and uh devils even attend church there's scriptures about uh the devils will you know believe in jesus but that doesn't mean that you know they're following him uh they they know that he's real they know that he exists they know that he's powerful and that they've been defeated but just because you believe or say but you're not living the lifestyle it doesn't mean that you're a part of the faith so hopefully that makes sense i'm also i'm gonna add, be adding some scriptures throughout the videos uh too so i'm giving you like uh you know actual scriptures from the word of god to back up what i'm saying i'm not just uh, talking in the video but um yeah so that's kind of like what we're going to be talking about in this video as i clean 
So again, I hope you guys are getting a message out of this, but you're also, you know, seeing me declutter. So I'll be going back and forth from the topic of church hurt and decluttering because, you know, sometimes I'm a little shaky when it comes to multitasking. But um, so, yeah, I just wanted to start the video with that. But let's get into this cabinet. And excuse me, guys, because I got to fix this. My door, I got to fix my door. Okay, so don't mind that right now. We're going to fix that when I'm done decluttering. Okay, so. Right now, as you can see, all of this, it's ridiculous because really, it's mostly like hair tools and all natural hair products. And like I mentioned in my last video, uh, or my video before last, when I did my haul, I'm down to four products that I use consistently. So there's no need for the rest of this. It was just that I was just too lazy to throw them out. And um, I'm also going to be showing these racks that i got from the dollar tree y'all these are good quality they're lightweight but the color is so pretty and they're like a good size one dollar y'all know how i love the dollar tree like they need to make me their ambassador because i'm putting them on in every video okay and i like a modern chic look for the price of nothing okay that's 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 the theme on my channel okay so the first thing i do so that i'm not overwhelmed is I like to pull everything out okay so as I'm pulling everything out I'm gonna continue on the topic of church hurt then once I've gotten everything out I'm gonna kind of explain you how I'm gonna start organizing things and then as I'm reorganizing we'll continue the talk so let's see if I can multitask and do this okay so let's start by taking out all the items and we'll be talking as I do that so yeah so like I was saying um, with the church hurt man i understand because and when i say church people we're going to use quotes because again let's remember everybody that goes to church they could be demons they could be devils that does not make them a believer so don't let people define the christian faith okay so and people that get offended by the word christian like okay we understand uh the history and and we just want to keep in mind that we follow we follow yah we follow god we follow the most high like i get it but for the sake of this video we're going to use the terminology because i know people like to and that's another thing too that be overwhelming people and be not making one of people you know be turning people away it's like everybody's learning and on their spiritual journey so we got to be careful that when we're teaching uh we're coming from a place of compassion okay when we're teaching certain things and i can't please everybody in this video so for the sake of this video we're going to use christian okay <laughs> so anyways like i was saying a lot of church people um can be very very uh mean just like not even judgmental because it's that too judgmental too it's like I get it, you know, people need to be corrected and reproved, you know, I, I want to be corrected. Um, I love watching videos that and, and reading the word that shows me, you know, where I fall short because I'm one of those people I love to grow. Like I always want to grow and I always want to change and I always want to know what I can do better. You know what I mean? But I think some people, they try to rush you to be where they are in their spiritual journey and it's like everybody's gonna grow at a different everybody's gonna grow at a different pace you know what i mean like now if i'm just out here wilding and, and cutting up and just you know off the chain off the chain okay i get it but i feel like some believers they they nitpick every little thing you do like why you wear them color socks and you know why your hair this color and, and, and it's just like okay let me get the basics down let me get the word let me if i'm if i'm fresh in the faith and i'm just coming to christ like let me read and learn for myself instead of just dot, throwing all these rules at people like you know look at the pharisees in the bible and, and the sadducees and all the laws and commandments they knew but yet they were so puffed up in wisdom and knowledge that their heart was so far from god they 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 couldn't some people are so puffed up in their wisdom that if you try to tell them something or you try to they they correcting you all day but then when you see a fault in them and you try to tell them well hey this is not right either they don't want to hear it 
especially, and I hate to say this, but like a lot of older people, like that be stuck in their ways. It's this thing of like, if somebody younger than them comes and tells them something, then it's, you don't know what you're talking about because you're not old enough and you're not an elder. But where I find fault in that is, you see a lot of people in the Bible that were kings at 15, 16, 17 years old, ruling older people, you know. Um, we see David, uh, how wise he was at a young age, you know. Even Jesus started his ministry at a young age, you know. And I think, you know, we need to take into consideration the youth and, and hear what they have to say because the youth, especially, they're the... They're the next generation. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, when, when it comes to people that are older, I have a lot of respect and I show a lot of reverence because people that are older obviously have acquired more wisdom and have lived through things that we're either going through or we're, we'll eventually be going through. So don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not saying be disrespectful and don't listen to nothing the elders say. But what I am saying to the elders is to sometimes like, know line up if, if somebody's younger than you line up what they're saying to the word of god and if it has some truth in it like humble yourself and, and take that in consideration too you know so that's another thing with church hurt um a lot of the elders just being so hard on newcomers and people coming in and you know you come to church and you got on something now if you've been if you've been in the faith and for a long time and people know that you know better Okay, that's different. But, like, say you bring somebody new to church or somebody that's new to the faith, and they may come to church with something on that's not that appropriate. You know what I mean? And instead of, you know, correcting somebody in love or kind of trying to show them, you know, the word of God, it's just like, you know, they look at you up and down and just stank face and nasty about it. You know what I mean? And that make people uncomfortable and not even want to come back or be a part of that you know and we have to remember that we're ambassadors of christ so when people see you acting like that and they're not in, they're not fully in the word of god to know the real nature of uh jesus and his his uh personhood if i should say that word and um you're representing and you're representing jesus in that light nobody's gonna want to be a part of that faith you know Okay, so I cleared everything out. Y'all can see that. Let me scoot back some. So I got a lot of stuff down here. A lot, a lot of stuff. So, um, before we get back to our talk, I'm going to tell you guys how I'm going to divide this up. So, I have four of these baskets, but I think I'm going to use... So let's see how many fit across. I, I was thinking about using just three, because I'm trying to really live like... A minimalist lifestyle you know I feel like and that's gonna probably be a whole nother talk for another cleaning video but uh, materialism like I want to you know get the things that I like and stuff but I'm just I don't want to be cluttered <laughs> so it looks like three fit across the glass one does it fits, but it'll be like sticking up. So I'm just gonna use three. So for the three is gonna be, the first basket is gonna be uh, probably like my hair supplies. Um, the second one, I'm thinking like hair tools. And then the third one is gonna be um, like toothpaste or soaps or different things like that i don't know we'll see we'll see as we go along but for the first one for sure i'm gonna be putting my um hair products in here and like i said in my last video the only three or four products i swear by is the jamaican black castor oil which i only use like on my roots to massage my roots um the as i am double butter cream so what I use to moisturize my hair at night. The OGX, oops, I broke the cap on this one. Uh, the OGX Argan Oil of Morocco. It looks like that. I love the OGX line. Um, I have their, the OGX Argan Oil of Morocco. 
shampoo and conditioner. I like to use matching products from the same line. I just feel like it works better. Um, the As I Am is the only product that's not OGX and the Black Jamaican Castor Oil. Um, so we'll put those in there. And that's pretty much it. Um, for the... What was I going to say? Um, I have a mask, too, that I, I use. The Deep Treatment Mask by Cantu Shea Butter. I've been using this only because I have it and I don't want to throw it away. And it's the only deep mask I have, so I'm going to keep this. But I want to see, again, if this line has a deep mask because I want to use um, all the same products. But I also usually, um, I do a pre-poo, which I also have that video on my channel where I use the aloe vera plant. And my hair is super soft after doing that. So a lot of times I don't even use a deep mask, but when I do, I'm just going to be using the Cantu. And that's literally all the hair product I need. So I have my leave-in, I have an oil, I have a cream, I have a shampoo and a conditioner and a deep mask. Six products, y'all. It really should be, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it should be really six to seven hair products in your cabinet. You only, you should only be using one of each and then maybe a gel, okay? And I use the gel when I do my um, wash and goes. So the Eco Styler gel. Um, I have these other gels too that are like lightweight, the Aunt Jackie's flaxseed. But again, I'm not gonna be keeping this decluttering today okay um, I also have this co-wash from Cantu I'll probably be selling this on my Poshmark because um, I've never used it I don't want to throw it away so I might put like a little uh, Cantu kit together because I also have the foil calm detangler so brand new y'all so I'm not throwing away or wasting anything but I'm definitely not keeping it or I'll usually like put it outside in a box and somebody could just grab it so all the stuff that I don't want, I'm going to be putting it behind me. You'll see me, like, putting it behind me. So, um, yeah, but back to what I was saying. So with the churches or whatever, um, another thing, too, that I don't like, and I really hate to say this because it may make some people upset, but I've been to a lot of churches in my life, a lot of churches, and... I just recently found somewhere, this was probably like two years ago, that I can go to that was the first place I actually genuinely learned the word of God. And it's sad because, again, like I said, I've been to a lot of churches and the churches that I went to, looking back now where, I am, where I'm going now, I wasn't learning nothing. And I know y'all can relate. And again, I really, really hate to say this. And I see it too a lot on YouTube with pastors. Just pay attention. It's like the whole time they're talking, they may read one or two scriptures. And they will drag out those one or two scriptures, the whole sermon. And then they'll start talking about themselves and their family and their kids. And at the end of the day, you realize that every single sermon is about them and rarely ever about Jesus. And it's like, are we coming here to worship you? Or are we coming here to worship the Lord? Now, I feel too, this is a reason why a lot of people fall into idolizing uh, pastors and, you know, bishops and people in leadership. And I'm not blaming that on the pastors because us as the people, the word speaks about idols. We shouldn't be worshiping anybody. We can... We can learn from others um, and get and, and get wisdom from other people, but we shouldn't be idolizing them and we shouldn't be making them our gods. But also, like I said, when I'm listening to these sermons, these people talk about themselves a lot, a lot. Or it's very like a, when you listen to it, you feel like you're listening to a motivational video. Like a video I'm doing right now, this would be, you know, I guess you can consider it a motivational video. You know, I'm not specifically teaching uh, out of the scripture. Now, I'm, I'm referencing scripture verses, but I'm not, like, sitting down and explaining the scriptures and breaking the scriptures down to you. That's, that's the job of a pastor. And their sermons would sound like my YouTube videos. Very, like, 
you know, general and, and referencing God, but not teaching, teaching. That would sound like this sit-down video I'm doing with you guys right now. And it's like, what are we here for? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's sad. So, like I said, I was going for years and years and years, and I wasn't learning anything, like nothing, now that I think about it. I was just getting, like, really feel-good messages, you know, again, like motivation. I felt like I was going to motivational conferences. But when I started studying myself, I started learning so much to the point I felt like, well, what do I need to gather with other people for? Because I'm gathering and I'm not learning anything. And again, we should be studying on our own anyways. But I also expected to gather with others and, and, and really gain more wisdom, especially from somebody that calls himself a leader. And so that really bothered me and it really troubled me. And also, I noticed I would go to churches where it would be music like the the music would be like the whole service it would just go on and on and on and on and again there's we need to worship the lord we need to sing praises to him but when the whole service is singing and, and just dragging the song out and i'm not being taught anything that's scary that's real scary and if i'm leaving sunday after sunday after sunday and i'm i haven't learned anything new about who Christ is, that's scary. <laughs> um, that's another problem I have. Um, and again, you these are the same places where you will receive church hurt and criticism and people telling you what you need to do and what you need to change. And you're looking at them like, well, I'm not learning anything here. And I come, I'm coming out into the parking lot and y'all already cursing and cutting people off in the parking lot and talking about what people have on and i'm just seeing that the spirit of god is not here he's not here and i'm seeing religious action versus a true change of heart a true reflection of a, a follower of christ a true reflection of a believer um it's really really sad it's really sad and um oh, i also wanted to share this leave-in conditioner is also a product um now if you see this getting full it's not because i'm product hoarding it's literally the same product but i bought a backup because it's low so again right here i really only have like six products but you may see some some backups because the bottle's getting low okay so just want to preface that <laughs> um so this basket is going to be mine and then the basket next to it you're going to see with products is going to be my son's product okay that I use on him because I use different products for his hair. Um, so yeah, anyways, yeah, so you these people be super judgmental, you know, talking about you, gossiping, they be gossiping in the church. Um, everything be a fashion show. It seems like people are more concerned about what they have on versus um, what they have on what other people have on versus focusing on what the word of God says. And here's my problem with that was dangerous. Um, now, there are people that get dressed up for church, but there's a such thing as being overly dressed. You may be what you consider modest, but is it really modest if you're overdoing it and you're uh, attracting attention to yourself and what you have on disturbs other people? Because a lot of elders, they'll be overly dressed and then want to judge new young people that come in with what they have on because it's not as uh it's more street and not a church fit but yet the church fit that they have on is so extravagant that it brings attention to them versus is is a distraction what they have on so both sides of the spectrum is dangerous if you're overly dressed but then you're uh criticizing somebody coming in that's a little bit more scantily or more street dressed you're just as much as a fault as you're just as much in fault i feel like as they are so again it's a heart thing like obviously when we come to god we want to we want to have our best on basically what i'm saying this isn't a video to say what you can wear and what you can't wear but just be honest with yourself when you're getting dressed is it to bring attention attention to yourself 
um, is what you're wearing going to be a distraction to other people and keep them from learning? Like, is it modest? We know it's modest and we know it's not, you know. But again, like they say, the Lord judges the heart of people. So if you have a new believer coming in, they may come to church as is and, and, and they don't see anything wrong with that. And we shouldn't be tooting our nose up at them either. You know, you give that person time and you begin to show them and correct them in love. Or if you're going to criticize, buy them some clothes instead of talking about them. You know what I mean? Just like we got to start going about, you know, going about things a different way. So those are just uh, some of the other things. Um, also, you know, putting people's business on blast. Like if you're coming to a person in leadership with something confidential and your business is being spread around the church that's not cool either you know and a lot of people do that and it's like if somebody's coming to you and trusting you why you know and they they, they look up to you or whatever and you're just being deceptive by doing that you're being deceiving and then you got the church clicks you know if you don't dress or you don't speak in tongues or you don't talk a certain way then you can't sit with us you know what i mean it'd be them church clicks and that'll make a, a person uncomfortable too because now instead of people looking toward christ to transform them they're looking toward people as a standard of how they should dress how they should talk how they should act but there's no true heart transformation going on you know what i mean and one thing i've learned is i'm not looking toward nobody to guide me on how to dress or how to look or nothing we judging them by the fruit of the spirit okay and that's what the bible talks about so when you church so when you've been hurt in the church don't don't um don't blame the faith look at that person go look up the fruits of the spirit and again i'm gonna put all scriptures down below to where you can find these things and the different things i'm talking about but look up to look up the fruit of the spirit and see if the people that hurt you in the church uh bear those fruits you know the bible speaks about that that you know the tree tree is gonna bear good fruit so if you got somebody in the church that's just nasty just nasty just mean can't take correction they always got their new nose tooted up there they feel that they're better than everybody and um you know they just always looking down on people ask yourself do those qualities line up to the qualities in the bible i don't care how long they've been a church member i don't care uh what soup they got on we're judging by we judge as spirits we're not judging by earthly vessels and that fruit gonna show that fruit is definitely gonna show and let that determine what's what you know what i mean don't 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 let people deter you don't do it it's so sad you know i've heard so many different stories about why people don't go anymore and this is why a lot of people are saying don't go in churches of fraud and again like i said we are the body and the reason that people even get, okay we look at you know bible times many people when they attended um, church they would gather in people's homes you know they would study, they'd worship and pray, and they'd gather with believers. Because the Bible says, do not, you know, forsake the assembly of, of believers. So you want to gather and you want to learn with other people. Um, a lot of people have the problem with the actual physical church building because of, you know, um, deceitful, deceitful pastors. And, you know, people have a problem with the doctrine of tithing and, you know, just different things, you know, denominations, and I'm non-denominational, I don't believe in all them denominations, uh, apostolic and Baptist and all that, no, let's just follow the word of God, we're followers of Christ, you know, when you start adding all these denominations, and that's what also causes division, and I just, just not, I'm non-denominational, okay, so, um, what was I saying, y'all, I lost my train of thought, that's why I said, I, I'm not a good multitasker, um, oh yeah so I was saying that the Bible talks about not forsaking the assembly so I get why some people may say well I, 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 don't, I don't believe in church and the history church and da, 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 da. but be honest with yourself are you gathering strangers and you know people off the street and prostitutes and uh, 
the poor are you inviting them into your home and having bible study and really sharing the word of god with each other and praying together like the early church probably not you're probably not doing that so you know the church house we know we the people are the temple we the people are the church but the church house is just a building that allows people to safely gather because we're not about to be letting everybody and a mama up in our house let's be for real and this is a place that we can go we can gather and we can learn and it's your job when you're attending these places to line up the leadership's fruits with the fruit in the bible it's your job okay we can't keep blaming the church and oh they fake and they don't help nobody and what is the church doing for the community and look at this pastor been exposed and they just money hungry if somebody's money hungry or you feel like somebody's not genuine find find a different home to gather with remember i said in the beginning of this video i've been to so many churches my whole life and i just recently found somewhere that i can attend where i'm actually learning like i literally it's literally like school i'm learning about scriptures the history i'm learning theology i'm learning how it aligns with politics and what's going on today and people say you know christians don't talk about politics when all throughout the bible uh the prophets knew what was going on in politics and, and what was going on you know and you name me some name me some places where you can go where you just get and talk all those things in one like i'm telling you i've been to so many so don't be discouraged you may have to go to a hundred different places or gather with a hundred different groups of people. If you don't feel like going to church, you may have to, you know, find somebody's home to gather at. And then there could be crooked people there and you feel like, well, dang, I don't really want to, I don't really want to assemble with them no more either. You know what I mean? You may have to go through a lot to find genuine, true leadership, but it's your job to study yourself, to learn yourself. And then when you start seeking leadership and people to assemble with, you can align their fruits with the word of God. OK, so it's your responsibility. We got to quit blaming everybody else. And again, whatever you see is lacking. Um, you be the light. OK, stop blaming the pastors. We we're, that's I that's we're idolizing the pastors if we think that they should solve all the problems if you see there's a need in your community you go meet the need you be the light you be the example of um you know you be that glory of jesus christ let him work through you okay so i'm not letting what my pastor do determine my faith then that means i was never a true believer to begin with i was only attending and i was looking toward man to define who i am okay so we're not doing that <laughs> and that goes with anything whatever people out there believe you believe because you have built your own relationship don't let it be because uh, other people um, are telling you what to do or not to do okay so that's just that on that um, so yeah now that I'm done with that oh wait hold on All right, a couple more items um, I was looking at everything. So I don't use this on my son's hair, this cocoa butter. But since I only use, I only use water, water and grease. And sometimes I'll use the um, sporting waves on his hair as well. And I have room in his basket. I'm just going to start putting like, you know, body, body products in here basically. So I got the cocoa butter. Um, not a big fan of Johnson & Johnson, but we're going to use it. Um. I have it in here i'm gonna use it up but i really like cocoa butter because we be ashy with johnson and johnson like it don't do nothing um i have a little bit of nair i really shave i don't i don't know why i have this but <laughs> we're just gonna use it in there just in case um so we just got body and miscellaneous in there i got some uh coconut oops i got some coconut oil for the body hope you guys can see that it might still look like a lot. I'm going to show you up close, but it's really not. It just looked like that. <laughs> and um, I have a little bit of aloe vera gel for the body. And some hairspray. Put that in the back. Um, 
I think that's going to be it for what's going under here. And I also have my Revlon. It's a blow drying brush, brush, which I really love as well. I don't use it often now because I'm trying to reduce the amount of heat I put on my hair. So that's that right there. And what else? So yeah, that's pretty much all my hair tools. I pretty much got my curling iron, my crimper, my flat iron, and then my blow dryer. And that's it. And I'm going to show you guys what I've taken out. I've taken out a lot of stuff from under here. that's good enough um make sure everything i took out i really don't want so let me show you guys right now what's looking like that's what it's looking like right now it may still look a little bit cluttered but it's way organized way much more organized so again those are my hair products my son's here and then in the back all the body stuff um, my hair tools on that side and then I'm gonna show you everything that let me get up I just took out from under there so yeah you know still look a little bit cluttered this is everything I'm getting rid of and my mind feel clear already now these two paste right here I'm just going to put them in a box outside if somebody wants it. But I've been trying to use fluoride-free toothpaste. So I won't be needing that. But yeah. So I'm pretty much done with that. Um, I'm going to clean up that mess in a minute. But I just want to wrap this video up for you guys. So you guys could just relax. Watch me declutter a little bit. And just, you know, to give you guys a few things to think about. Because um, I enjoy making YouTube videos. But I also want to bring glory to christ with whatever i do i don't want to just be making stuff just to be making stuff i want to help be a light i want to help you know relax and bring peace to people um and show love and kindness and just give people um some things to think about as well and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video again i'm gonna put the scriptures down below of um, a lot of the things I was referencing in this video, I'm also going to put my blog link down below because I have a blog post on what I'm talking about as well. So that's why I made this video so that um, I can give you just more context behind um, what my blog post was about. Also, to to encourage y'all to start decluttering during this time being locked in, because when you declutter just spiritually, I feel lighter. I can think um, you know, when I'm reading and I'm spending time with God and I'm reading the word of God, I'm not thinking about, oh, I need to go clean this. Oh, I need to do this. Cause you know, our mind will get the wandering, you know, we got to put the flesh under subjection, but if you clean what you need to clean when it's time to study, when it's time to get serious, when it's time to be still, you know, your mind is empty and you just, you just feel a lot lighter. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.